Welcome to the Latin Wealth Podcast, a podcast dedicated to educating the Latino community about entrepreneurship, investing, and business. What's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to Wealth Wednesday. Super excited about today's episode because today we are talking about the Dominican Republic. And in fact, the whole episode is going to be about the DR. Super excited about this episode. As y'all know, there's been a lot of growth that's been happening recently in the DR. Um, a lot of people are looking to invest in the DR. A lot of people are visiting. Tourism's been going crazy. Um, people not wanting to, to leave DR. They want to stay there. We're going to be diving into what's going on, what's happening. You know, why is the DR uh, economy starting to boom? What are some things that they're doing well? And yeah, we just want to break down what's going on in the Dominican Republic. Before we get into that, though, I want to give you guys a reminder that this Friday, we got another Latin Wealth interview dropping. And in fact, if you guys checked out about two weeks ago, we had my guy Juan on the podcast. He's the owner of the ATM business. We had the privilege to actually get in contact with his mentor, who's doing very, very well in a different, indi different industry, different business. And he came on um, and just, man, just gave us a lot of game, a lot of jewels. And that episode is dropping this Friday. Super dope episode. Check that out. With that being said, my God, Jeremiah, how you feeling today, man? Feeling good. We got, you know, edit day we're going to be talking about. So, I, you know, this is this is by popular demand. Everybody, everybody sure. said, I always talk about Puerto Rico. So, you know, we got to show love <laughs> to the cousins. Got to show love to the cousins. Absolutely. Definitely by popular demand. Every time I post something related to DR, it, it does pretty well. So shout out to y'all, man. I'm very excited to jump into this episode real quick. Jeremiah, have you been to the Dominican Republic yet? Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, First impressions, yeah. what were your thoughts about it? Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. I mean, obviously, coming from Puerto Rico is very similar, right? Yeah. But uh, still, it's, it's very distinct, even within itself. A um, little bit different culture. I would say uh, the hospitality is off the chart. Mm. Great people. Um, mm. Food is the same, but basically pretty similar, right? But uh, great people, great feel. And what I noticed the most was, you know, the growth. I had a, a thought process of what I thought was previously or what it was before. That's not so true anymore. Like just mm -hmm. rapidly expanding and growth. And that's kind of what I noted. Like my biggest thing was like, dang, I see a lot of construction out here. So something's mm -hmm. happening. Um, happening. And that's what, that was my first impression. Mm. And how many times have you been out there? Oh, my God. <laughs> I've seen um, it a couple of times. I it, it's quite a few yeah okay okay i haven't been out there yet man so Bro, you, gotta, I, you gotta get out you gotta get out they're gonna yeah. tell you like you know la romana or you're gonna tell you uh boca chica santo domingo obviously people, yeah right? but man go to the go to the hills go to the mountain got to got to yeah got to for sure let's 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 dive into it man so look we are gonna be shout out to latino metrics they've been putting out some pretty dope information <laughs> and graphs yeah. out there and sure. what i do like i want to give them a quick shout out what i like about them is they are focused on putting information about latin america in a positive way so typically the articles that come out from them are positive it's not about typically they're not about like gangs and talking about you know negative stuff right it's stuff that's like you know we want to see and that's kind of the reason why we built Latin Wealth as well. Like we want to be a platform, a media platform that shines a positive light on our community. So I definitely vibe with some of the stuff that they put out and they put out um, a graph basically breaking down how the DR broke its foreign investment record last year. So in the year 2022, they brought in a little over $4 billion in foreign direct investment in 2023. They brought in close to $4.4 billion in foreign direct uh, investment. All right. So seen some growth there. And you guys are probably wondering, okay, where, where is this money going? Right. We, we hear the 4 billion, the 4.4, what is, what does this mean? Right. So we got money coming in to real estate 
in the DR, which is on the rise. You got a lot of people that are visiting the DR. They love it out there. It's beautiful. Let me buy a property out here. We're going to get into Urban Teach as well. Urban Teach has been um, definitely doing her thing out there. She, um, yeah, I'll get into a message that she posted when we talk about tourism, um, but also commercial and trade. So exports of things like medical instruments, gold, tobacco, industrial raw materials are just some of the things that the Dominican Republic exports in their country. And then if you look at this graph, a big portion of where the money is coming into is tourism. Huge, mm -hmm. huge portion of it. And we'll get into breaking that down in a minute, but also other sectors such as energy and mining doing pretty well. And if you're wondering where is this money flowing in from, countries such as the USA, Spain, Mexico, Canada, Panama, France, all over the world, people are investing in the Dominican Republic. The U.S. has accounted for 30% of last year's investment, which is insane, followed by Spain's $670 million or 15%. And tourism remains the most exciting prospect for foreign money. Jeremiah, you've been a bunch of times, man. When you see this information, when you see these graphs, what are your thoughts about this? And we'll get these into tourism things. right now in a minute. No, these are all things that I've seen. Um I was actually really surprised as we looked at as I looked at the numbers, I was reviewing them. I really thought, and I was really studying and looking, looking, looking. I thought I would see China on there as a big right thing. because it's, they have maybe, don't maybe they have an agreement not, with China? Yeah, China? yeah. I was like, well, maybe it's not reported because I know there's a lot, there's a lot. I, me, but like I know there's a lot right. of uh, engineering. There's a lot, a lot of money coming in from China, and I was surprised I didn't see them on the list. But um, no. I mean, tourism, obviously, we're going to get in that in a second, but it's funny. I don't know whether you noticed this, Chris, but I it, I thought it was weird. Um, you see the biggest investors in the United States, of course, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's in the Caribbean, it's in our general sector. But then the second was Spain. Now, isn't it funny that the two countries that basically own and run the majority of things in that area, right, or had colonies in that area, yeah. are the two biggest importers? Or influx of money. So I was like, they, they haven't really let you go. It kind of just moved to a different, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they don't own you, but if they control the money that comes into your country, right? It, it, so I was like, oh, okay. And they cool. know they know what they have in their hands, right? So they don't want to give this up. They want to continue to invest sure. in there. Yeah. Man, I mean, DR, you go, you look at some pictures, you see it. It's one of the most beautiful places you'll ever go on earth. Like I said, people are wonderful. So, you got all these great things and these great, uh, the great weather and all these things that go along with it. So the industries, the way stuff breaks down, I really wasn't surprised with it. I do think that um, where the money comes from and where it's going to, I think that's very indicative of the thought process of that, of those countries though. Like we look mm -hmm. at the United States, the majority of their money's going to tourism, um, mm -hmm. you know, 1.33 billion. So 1.8, they actually take up dang near the whole tourism industry but then like spain is more focused in on energy crazy right so it's like you kind of look at the breakdown of the countries and it's like huh your mm -hmm. interests are in different places now to me the more viable um investment is spain what they're doing which is i'm investing into energy into things that can actually produce additional profit tourism can do that as well but it has its limitations but we'll get into that in a second but yeah that's that's on on this breakdown a lot of good information, um, and you can see things starting to starting to grow. I, I also on there. Did you start to see like if you look back in? Um, I think I was looking at if you look at twenty fourteen and forward, um, you see tourism is actually it just exploded. Mm -hmm. Like it's weird, right? Because looking, in, yeah, you're probably gonna post this for them, but you start to see tourism just it's it's just going Explode. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that is? Yeah, because there was a it it almost doubled from 2014 to 2015. Yeah. Almost damn near it probably it actually did double. And then look at 14, 14 to 15, and then 15 to 16. Like look at yeah. the, the numbers is is crazy. I don't know, it's that's wild to me. Yeah, so that's definitely like look when we look at these graphs, that's definitely something we want to look into is like what happened in 2014, 2015. You know, why did it explode like that? 
And, you know, there's another graph that you just mentioned, like where, you know, United States is it's pretty much eating up the most of that tourism. It's funny, if you go to the bottom of it, mm -hmm. 0.14 billion of that is in the financial space. And yeah. it's Switzerland, United Kingdom, uh, Grand Cayman, you know, yeah. these, these Which are where all people... offshore banks and people that basically <laughs> right. that's really Swiss banking, right? The Swiss banks, offshore banks in the Cayman Islands. These are what does that mean? That means a lot of the funds and the things and the money that flows through there actually the laws of America, because people are like, why wouldn't America put money into the financial system? Because the majority of the money moving throughout the island, you would call it illegitimate because mm -hmm. it comes from offshore banks. Not to say that it is. I'm just saying usually, right, illicit money moves through offshore banks. So like the Cayman Islands, Swiss bank accounts, because they don't have extradition. So they can't freeze your bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So it's, it would be hard for the U.S. to get into that financial system, um, you know, with the way we run our finances above board. For sure. So, 100%. And so what do you think about Panama? So you see where Panama is investing I did. Um, real estate. So yeah. about $0.25 billion. Yeah. Um, look, and maybe you can break it down a little bit better than me. But when I when I went to Panama, I mean, there you you it looks like you drive into Miami. Oh, so sure. do they see the potential of real estate? Is that why is they're big on real estate in, in the Dominican Republic? Um, I believe that the, so something that should be highly spoken of, and we're going to, and I don't think people speak about this as often, what's really different for DR and the rest of a lot of the Caribbean nations, including Puerto Rico, DR is a sovereign nation. They're their own country. And so they're able to go into trade and create trade with Panama, right? A, a culture that's like theirs. The music is the same. The people eat the same, right? Kind of yeah. similar backgrounds racially and things like that. They can set up trade and allow for influx of real estate. Panama and um, Panamanian citizens and people that have the money, they obviously know that it's an island nation. It's going to make a lot of money when it comes to people wanting vacation homes. Mm -hmm. But they're able to set that up and make money off those agreements versus other countries um, because DR is independent. It's its own country. So I don't even know if Panama putting that money in would, would have even been welcomed or been as much as it is if they weren't independent, because mm. that's quite a bit of money from a country that's, you know, Panama's evolving itself. So that's kind of, that's a lot of money coming in. 100%. Yeah, man, very, very interesting information. And just to see how other countries are investing into the DR um, and what goes into it. And we, as we mentioned that tourism remains the most exciting prospect for foreign money. So, I actually made a post about this a couple of days ago. It did pretty well, but the Dominican Republic emerged as a post pandemic tourism leader, attracting mm -hmm. 7.1 million visitors in 2022, which is actually pretty crazy. If you think about it, cause that's just, as we're coming out of the pandemic, people are wanting a place to go. And, you know, a lot of people chose to DR. Right. And then in 2023, it jumped to 8 million. And then this year, it's set to hit 10 million visitors mm -hmm. in the Dominican Republic, which is absolutely crazy. And in that period, it welcomed 60% more tourists than Brazil, the region's largest country by population and size. I had seen some crazy, I don't know the exact number, some crazy statistics. Like you can fit 100 Dominican Republics in the country of Brazil. It's like Brazil is that big. And also, it's one of the smallest Latin American countries. It's the second most visited behind Mexico. Now, obviously, we just broke down why that is. A lot of that tourism is coming from the United States. The United States is a lot closer to the DR than Brazil. Okay. Um, but very interesting nonetheless. And, you know, the tourism is, is, is definitely booming out there. I mean, economic policy has got a lot to do with it as well. Um, obviously easy exchange rate. Um, <laughs> I don't know the exact yeah. exchange rate for Brazil, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that their currency is at a higher place than the peso, than the Dominican peso. So I can take, you know, a dollar of mine and it's usually like 42 between, it, it fluctuates between like 36 to 50, uh, $1, right, to Dominican mm -hmm. peso. So you get a lot more buying power out of the Dominican Republic as you do that currency exchange. 
Um, and the Dominican Republic plays off that. They know that their money is at where it's at. So it's going to draw more American people because you're using the dollar, mm -hmm. right? And it, it has more buying power out there than in Brazil. And then secondly, Brazil has got his own political stuff that they got going on with the president mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of just madness that Brazil has going on. Also, if we were talking about, because I saw that stat too, I think it was like 112 DR Dominican Republic in Brazil or something Crazy. like that. <laughs> Here's the biggest thing people got to think about, though. All, most of Brazil, a lot of Brazil. Is the rainforest. For, the yeah. rainforest. So yeah. you're not going to, like, how much tourism could you do in a dense Right. It's, it's only the coastal cities, really. Right. Exactly. So that's kind of a skewed, like, yeah. demographic that they're talking about. It's not really fair to really, right, because all of the Dominican Republic is basically explorable. You can explore mm -hmm. all of the Dominican Republic. You can't do that in Brazil. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't want to push them down too far. Yeah. Dominican Republic is getting more, but that's kind of not a fair comparison, I would say. Very true. Very sure. true. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wanted to read this this message from the, the spokeswoman of the Dominican yes, Republic, yes, Urban yes, Peach. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she made a comment on that post. That she I wanted to read it because she made some good points. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these are kind of selling points, but the tourism board in the country is doing an amazing job at promoting the DR as an amazing destination, which I can agree with the, the, the marketing, you know, them wanting to get people out there, you know, you go on social media and where are a lot of people are going nowadays. They're going to the DR for various reasons. Right. Um, she mentioned that they have five international airports connecting with pretty much every country in the globe, which wow. is huge. A few cruise ship ports with every major, every major cruise line docking over waters. Um, you know, we mentioned the statistic about, you know, this year they're going to hit over 10 million travelers. Um, she did also mention that the local economy is seeing it too, because this is something big that people mentioned. They're like, look, all this money is coming into the country. Are the local people seeing it? This is somebody that travels to the DR damn near every month, multiple times a month. She's an investor out there. She says the local economy is seeing um, the fruit of the investments and whatnot. Um, what else, you know, she's having conversations with people in the transportation companies, food services, local companies. Um, and they're all happy with the surge of travelers coming in to the Dominican Republic. Um, what else? She pretty much said that she, she's ready to, to host Latin wealth in the DR as well. We're ready for that. So, <laughs> phenomenal. but I, I love that she pointed out like, look, five, airports out there you know they're, they're welcoming people they're ready for the influx of individuals to come out there and the local economy is seeing it too i think that we talked about that before we started recording and i said dang bro they passed us up and by yeah. us i mean puerto rico we got to do our part right to get our we got our own stuff that we've already mm -hmm. obviously talked about that we got to focus on but again i cannot I'm going to keep pushing this. My man Dean is going to tap me on the back for this, but they're an independent country. You can do mm -hmm. certain things and you have the space and the wherewithal to decide what you do for your country. Mm -hmm. um, and DR is, now what's funny is, I don't know if people remember this. DR had a president that came from New York. He was born and raised in New York. His family was from DR, right? Okay. He came down, they made it, it usually you're not able to be a president somewhere if you're not born in that place. Okay. She can, uh, you know, y'all can quote me, figure out. But what's crazy is, is he went down, basically took the the monetary systems and the financial wherewithal from New York and took the system and what he learned growing up there, took it and implemented. It's taken years, but the economic cycle here in the United States is like 10 to 14 years. This mm -hmm. has been about almost 15 years since that guy got in office. Now you're starting to see a lot of the things that he put into place, the different programs, mm. um, you know, the focus on actually receiving foreign, you know, foreign investment and investing back in the infrastructure, all these different things that he put, these programs he set up, you start to see that he's in play right now. Um, mm. And DR is, is just growing rapidly, man. Um, Shouts out to the tourism board as well for putting the money in the right place. For sure. hundred percent. Quick, quick side note. Do you think PR could use another airport to use another airport we need another two airports mm. yeah uh you think on the north side no nah. well yeah on no? the north side we can put one in uh, isabela or uh quebradilla 
because my OS, they have an airport over there. It's yeah. just not like it's not the best airport. We can work right. on that one. Ponce needs a better it's one. Like we, it's, it's just what we need. Ponce and maybe mm -hmm. like Fajardo or like yeah. on that side needs one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Hundred percent. All right. Um transitioning from tourism. You know, energy has also been rapidly taking a stage in this sector as well. Uh, we mentioned that the uh, it's bringing in about $1 billion in 2023, which is almost three times the average of the past five years. Um, a big investor is going to be Spain, as we mentioned, Mexico, uh, and some parts of the rest of the world, but basically Mexico and Spain uh, investing in the energy sector in the Dominican Republic. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts about this? They oh I I forgot to mention this not to cut you off. There's a hundred and ten million dollar solar energy park in Monte Plata, which is one of the largest largest of its kind in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, I mean this is a great example of the energy the islands countries renewable energy projects that they're taking serious. I mean I think that that's something we've obviously spoken on on our side. I think DR is taking it seriously and they they're starting to realize. Um, the infrastructure and things that are needed to make sure that that energy or those investments are, you know, seen through. I think, again, there's less bureaucracy and there's less red tape. So the money coming in mm -hmm. from these countries, they can work directly with the country and make sure, right, to ensure that, hey, if we're That's putting it. In money, it's going to go to what we're doing and the infrastructure, everything is laid out to make this successful. There's mm -hmm. not all the different levels of bureaucrats mm -hmm. and hands that have to be paid and all It's just, to me, it just seems way more streamlined. So then they're going to sure. be more successful because you don't got to worry about paying all the different levels of people. Yeah. And that we mentioned that we're going to have somebody on the podcast that is actively in the energy space in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. So we're going to ask him about that. Like, yo, why, why is there so much red tape? Why is it so much challenges? It seems like, I don't know. It's just so much hurdle just to get from point A to point B, right? And I'm like sure. you said, I mean, people ahead. have their opinions. There's points behind that. D and DR is the I I love DR being this way. I love DR growing off tourism. I love everything that's happening for DR not only because they're basically like the cousins to Puerto Rico. We're very similar in almost everything. For not sure. only for that, but I love it because what it shows is a case study that what you can do and be successful mm. is focus. Cut out the crap, cut out the corruption. DR totally changed its prison system. Like they've done mm -hmm. so much stuff to ensure that they could start to be better as as people, like developing better people. They all they still have their flaws. We all do, whatever, right? But it's a great case study. And it just shows mm -hmm. what can happen if you actively take that, you know, that active approach. Instead of being reactive. When storms mm -hmm. come and hurricanes mess up yours and then trying to like fix broken wire, like instead of doing that, being proactive, I think mm -hmm. that's what uh, Dominican Republic is proving that it works if you do that in the right way. 100%. Shout out to DR. And one thing that we did want to hit on is climate change. Yes. Uh, I know you wanted to hit on this and you had a couple of points, right? And how they are, how they can adjust the climate change and, you know, hurricanes and, and natural disasters and things of that nature. Um, I was just going to say, you know, from because that's one of their biggest parts. Anytime, even if you go super deep, the GDP, obviously, inside of the Dominican Republic is growing leaps and bounds, right? But the biggest cost on their GDP um, is, is the electricity sector. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes from hurricanes, that come from loss of power. The loss of power then causes loss of productivity. Um, thought process-wise, right, if we're going to do this and we're going to, like, work through just piece by piece, you want to increase the electrical efficiency first, right? And you're going to do that by more production. So I would have a, a, a like a stronger focus on manufacturing, a stronger focus on getting, get a Tesla plant out there, get like, do these different things that's going to draw in industries that creates more revenue or taxation. You take that money, do more production, do what you're doing currently. Then you invest that money back into uh, research and development. Right. Mm -hmm. Into alternative energy, right? Building out, finding out more ways to use, you know, micro generation and using the stuff that you're creating in the one area where you're doing alternate energy. And how can you spread that out? Like how can you create more of that? So 
Here's the plan. Number one, increase your, your electricity, your electrical efficiency through production. Have more, create more plants and have more factories there. And that are obviously right according to the economy and according to the environment. Now that you're producing more, you take that money and invest that back into research and development in better ways to number one, do alternative energy or how to improve the current options that you guys have. Does that make sense? So I'm making more money through creating and bringing in more foreign investors to create. They already have the attention. Let's get some manufacturing going. Then I take that money and invest it into research and development to then right wean ourselves off of the electrical or at least find out how to make it better so we can stay up longer. So then if you stay up longer time a, a longer period of time and you're producing more electricity, now we can be more productive and we don't mm -hmm. have that loss of GDP. So just by simply not losing, that adds to the GDP. For sure. Now we got more money to do what? Create more tourism, create more, right? It's it's all a cycle. Everything's tied together. Everything's tied together, 100%. Love that. Um, look, there's still a couple more things or a lot more things that we can hit on when it comes to the DR. So we kind of want to split this up into two episodes. Uh, we're going to come back maybe in a week or two and hit on some other things that are also going on in the DR that are contributing to the growth of the Dominican Republic's economy. All right. So I think this was a phenomenal episode. Is there anything else that you want to hit on before we get out of here, Jeremiah? No, um, I would just tell everybody to, especially for like uh, our people, right? What equal people? You want to see a good example because we had so many comments and things. Um, shout out to the Dominican Republic. We got to give them their flowers. Got to. Like I said, maybe we start studying what they're doing and figuring out how to implement some of the stuff that they're doing. We're right there next door to them. Maybe we should That's, be doing oh, We can't ever do it. Well, maybe we should, we should start. We should start figuring out. Hey. It's like, like you said it the best, like they right there, they're cousins. We, I almost identical in every way. Why can't we be doing the same? And I know what people are going to say. And if that's, and I'm not saying it, Dean said we tried to stay away from the I word, but if that's, if that's the basis of it, maybe we, maybe things should change. That's all I'll say. Maybe things should be different. Maybe you need to mm -hmm. figure out some things. So that's what I would say. Um, if this was, if this, information was interesting to you guys you didn't know mm -hmm. that the Dominican Republic was growing like this you just sure. see people traveling there but you didn't know the basis of it if this was interesting share with one of your people share with one of your Dominican cousins right share it with your people man let them get some information about it maybe they can tell you why things are going the way that it's going 100% love that man on that note I do want to give a quick shout out to somebody that's been tapping in to the podcast um, he hit me up his name's Taha and I want to give him a shout out because he he sent me a message. He was like, I throw on your podcast when driving just to catch up a lot of great information. Um, he says, I'm not Latin, but I feel connected. I feel connected. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that because he, he's not, even though he's not Latino, you know, he's tapped in, people are listening. Um, this information is, is honestly, everybody can listen to it. Uh, but it, it's dope that, you know, we're getting other people you know, tapped in. We would love to see more of our people. Is. Yeah. I wish more of our people. I was just about to say. <laughs> I was getting there. I was I seen your face. He was like, come on. We want to see more of our people listening and you know implementing. Um, yeah. but it's dope that it it's reaching, you know, various people and whatnot. So shout out to you. Shout out shout out to him. You know what that just gave me the feeling of? That just gave me the literally just gave me the feeling of what the reggaetoneros have when they're on stage and they're mm -hmm. in Russia. And they don't speak Spanish. But they're singing their song. <laughs> they know every that's word. Kind of, that's, that's kind what of what it, that's, bro. That's what it is, bro. And look, man. Yeah. People that are, I'll say this: people that are intelligent, they're gonna take information and they're gonna apply it, no matter where it's coming from or who it's coming from. If it's a credible source, if they can apply it, they're gonna apply it, no matter what they look like or no matter what we look like or where we come from. Take the game yep. and run with it. Hundred percent. Yep, I agree. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this episode. As Jeremiah said, share this with somebody else in your family. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.